Welcome to Europe PCR 2023, where we're going to discuss the five years outcome from the co-op trial. My name is Lars Sandergaard. It's a pleasure to be here with my good friend, uh, Professor Francesco Maisano. So Francesco, at ACC earlier this year, we saw the presentation of the five years data from the co-op trial. Maybe you can just um, give the highlight of what they, those data actually showed. So it's a very important trial uh, and now we have the final five years outcome which shows uh, that uh, 95 percent of patients at five years who have been treated with mitroclip, uh, they have a uh, MR reduction less than uh, moderate uh, and this shows some uh, durability of, uh, of, the, uh, of the therapy. Also important to acknowledge that uh, there is a uh, almost 50% uh, risk reduction of re-hospitalization and death at five years as compared to the control group. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in principle, we see that what we has been achieved early in many patients mm -hmm. is stable over time. Obviously, we're talking about high-risk patients overall. Yeah. So according to the study protocol, patients were not allowed to do a crossover within the first two years and afterwards there was a crossover. I think it was almost half of the patient in the control group which crossed over to the treatment group. So, so what was uh, the conclusion of, on this crossover group? Uh, it shows that it, uh, even if you treat patients later, you, you still can get some mm -hmm. advantage as compared to uh, doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, this crossover has been highly debated for many reasons in many different uh, points of view. Mm -hmm. And it's always difficult to analyze data when there is crossover. Mm -hmm. But from an uh, ethical standpoint, I think it has been a, a good way to uh, offer this therapy to patients uh, who have been uh, initially randomized to uh, guideline-directed um, uh, medical therapy. And somehow it's disturbing uh, the final uh, assessment of the data, but it still shows that treating MR with some uh, uh, structural intervention in patients with heart failure brings some benefit. Mm. So early treatment is better, but even though you wait, there's still something to gain, be gained here. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. but I think it's very important to uh, stress the fact that treating earlier is the key yeah. element. So, so how has this trial or these five years outcome changed clinical practice for, for, for these patients? So first of all, we need to acknowledge that uh, COAP trial has been impacting guidelines. Mm. And prior to uh, COAP trial, guidelines were not so strongly uh, supporting these mm. therapies. Now uh, the therapy is supported by uh, class 2A to B, depending on, on the uh, patient characteristics. So obviously there has been a change. Uh, more has to be done. Uh, and I think this data is probably convincing that there is something there uh, in selected patients. I think uh, uh, transcated edge-to-edge repair is an important therapy as an adjunct to guideline-directed medical therapy. So, so um, transcatheter edge-to-edge repair on the mitral valve has been around for around 20 years. We now also have one device with approved for replacement. How do you see those two modalities uh, moving as moving forward? I think it's very important to have a platform, uh, as, let's say a portfolio of different options, because as we know, uh, mitral valve disease is very diverse. Patients come with different uh, clinical and anatomical characteristics, and uh, trying to fit every, everyone in one single device, it doesn't work. So having a platform, including repair and replacement, is fundamental. Mm -hmm. And in high volume centers, in centers of excellence, the selection criteria is a fundamental step to assign the patient to the best therapy. Mm -hmm. So, so today, TIA is the most common used intervention on the mitral valve, where replacement is still uh, in the early phase. How do you see the future in, let's say, 10, 15 years from now? Is that going to change? I think, yes. I mean, the uh, transcade edge-to-edge -edge repair has been an uh, opening uh, to the field. So now, uh, for many years, we have been even forced mm. to apply this technique to all comers. As we move forward and as we have more tools, we will probably diversify treatment. And I see a potential for expansion. On the other hand, uh, you know, the Alfieri edge-to-edge -edge repair uh, has been always uh, defined by its versatility. Mm -hmm. 
and ease of use. So it will always play, play a role, I think, even in the future. Thank you, Francesco, for giving us these insights on the Co-op five years data.